Hello everyone, I am Dimple Rangila and today we will talk about management of individualized and group learning in classroom. The aim of education is to enable every individual child to become an able learner and as much individualized learning is the ultimate goal of all teaching learning processes that are used in the classroom so that each learner becomes self-reliant in acquiring learning experiences. Individualized learning, also known as self-based learning, requires individual efforts and interest to perform a task. The teacher gives clear instructions to every learner on the carefully designed set of learning activities to be successfully completed at his or her own pace. Therefore, as a teacher, one must provide ample opportunities for the student to function individually and at one's own pace in the classroom. In such a method, the communication is dominantly one way, that is the teacher is the one who is delivering most of the time. From the teacher to the students in which the teacher is in the total control of the process of interaction. If the teacher desires, then he or she may allow students to ask questions or discuss among themselves, which is very rare since there is a lot of pressure on the teacher to cover the syllabus of the, that is prescribed for that particular class or the subject. Student-teacher communication is less and virtually there is little scope for student-student communication. It has also been established that very few students at the primary stage have substantial learning gains through this method. For individualized learning, one can use technological devices like computers or use some self-learning materials and assignments depending on the availability of resources in school. Based on the learning theory of operant conditioning that was given by B.F. Skinner, programmed materials were used in a limited manner for self-learning during 1960s and 70s. The computer-assisted learning is now getting into classrooms which is aimed at developing individualized learning. So in this case, the child moves ahead on his or her own pace. So if they are able to solve a particular problem, they move on to the next. Else, they will first learn how to solve that and then move ahead. Textbooks along with specially designed guides or workbooks, specially prepared self-instruction materials are now widely, is now widely used in several schools for individual students in distance education courses. The assignments given to the students vary on the basis of duration for completion and time available. These assignments provide students with opportunities to practice for self-correction and understanding of a particular concept that has been taught in the classroom. Consistency in doing individual activities found to help in raising learning levels of the students. So, the following guidelines may be considered while creating individual learning situation in the classroom by teachers. Communicate assignments or activities clearly so that each student can have full understanding about what he or she is supposed to do. If necessary, give examples to illustrate your point. Monitor students' work. While the activity is going on, you should move around in class and provide help whenever necessary. Do not interfere, else students may feel discouraged. Let them work at their pace. In case they need a help, then be there as a facilitator and as a guide. Check, while checking students' assignments, since they work at different speed, so the class will not finish the task at the same time. In a large class size, checking students' work is a challenge, is challenging task. Sometimes this can be accomplished by getting students to check each other's work, which is only possible if the answers to the questions are very fixed or specific in nature. But there may be certain assignments that require careful reading on the part of the teacher. So, providing appropriate feedback to the students is very important. Learning occurs when students receive feedback on the performance of their assignments. All assignments need to be corrected and feedback should be given. They should not only be just given marks, they should be told that if the marks have been deducted, where have they been deducted and why and what should they have included in that particular assignment. This should occur as soon as possible after the assignments have been handed over to them. You might have noticed that in whole class learning and individual learning, there is one major limitation 
which is that the students cannot interact freely with each other which is also very important for peer learning and peer tutoring. So now we talk about the management of group learning. The importance of such interaction in providing a balanced education to the children began to be realized during the 1960s, largely as a result of the influence of the humanistic psychologists like Carl Rogers. He considered learning to be essentially social in nature and educating children in social environment makes them a good future citizen. Such a social atmosphere can be created in the classroom when the children are facilitated to have enough scope to interact with each other. Group learning, especially small group learning strategy, is considered as appropriate for this purpose. A progressive increase in the use of group learning methods in the classroom learning activities has been observed since the late 80s and 90s. During this interactive process, meanings are shared and information is exchanged. The classroom then becomes a social arena for increasing one's knowledge. By comparing their understanding with that of others and by examining their knowledge against others' knowledge, they develop a new understanding because every child will bring about a new perspective of his or her own on a particular topic of discussion. For example, while solving problems cooperatively, the students interact with each other, they debate, reason out, infer and conclude in the process of problem solving. So let's look at the advantages of this. It can be used to achieve extremely wide range of educational objectives, especially higher cognitive objectives of all types like problem solving, decision making and other complex life skills. It is also an approach for developing creative thinking and other divergent thought processes because when the children will be brainstorming all the ideas that are coming to their mind, they will bring that to the table. It is effective in achieving all types of affective and interpersonal objectives. Because of its versatility, group learning methods have been increasingly used by the teachers around the world for helping students to develop desirable attitudinal traits such as open-mindedness and willingness to listen to other people's point of view and for developing communication skills and general interpersonal skills. Some general features of group learning are several learners can provide more time, effort and resources available than one. A wide range of knowledge, skills, experience can be acquired through sharing knowledge and experience and since they will all be collaborating together to work on these ideas, this becomes shared knowledge and collective shared knowledge of that particular group and collective understand when they arrive at that collective understanding, they understand the perspective of the other. More and a variety of ideas can be generated through brainstorming in the groups. Errors can be identified and corrected more easily. Participation increases commitment of the students to the activity. So each one of them will feel, will feel responsible for their role in the whole activity and they will participate actively in the whole process. Now there may be various difficulties faced while having these group activities. There may be an absence of or lack of adequate coordination among participants. So that is something which the teacher has to look for. Unequal participation ranging for, from over domination by one or more individuals to partial or complete opting out or withdrawals. So many a times if the children uh, feel that another, one other child is not participating or somebody who is over dominating then these issues may, may be raised and then again the teacher has to facilitate there may be external or internal pressures on individual learners to confirm or polarize on the issue being discussed in the group that the, the, because so and so is their friend they have to uh, agree to what the viewpoint of their friend is. So this also is a major difficulty that can be faced. There may be absence of a systematic approach to the process, the whole process. There may be unsound, ambiguous or changing decision making procedures. Immediate evaluation of outcomes may be quite premature because then as they are doing it, we may not be able to evaluate them. It may need a discussion also towards the end. The role of the teacher in organizing group learning in the classroom is mainly of a facilitator and a guide. 
after deciding the topic to be discussed or problem to be solved in groups the teacher has three main function first in formation of groups second in facilitating communication in the groups and third in consolidating the outcomes of the learning in the groups the grouping of students can also vary it can be of different types grouping by ability grouping by interest grouping by choice and random grouping now first look at let's look at grouping students by ability or the homogeneous grouping ability grouping is a method involving looking at the ability of each student individually and placing him or her in a group with other students possessing the same ability for example students with proven high average and low abilities in mathematics performance are placed in three separate groups you can give them challenging tasks to the high ability group whereas the low ability group is given simple tasks to strengthen their understanding and skill in mathematical concepts and operations it gives the students an opportunity to put their ideas forward and with a combined effort come up with appropriate solution as per their ability levels the low ability students undoubtedly require teachers personal attention and hence this type of grouping can be done for enrichment or only for remedial purposes the advantage this advantage is that sometimes according to this kind of grouping students are labeled either as bright or as weak students the weaker students are likely to be demoralized which can adversely affect their self confidence grouping students by interest think of a classroom where the teacher plans to conduct a variety of activities simultaneously these activities may be drawing clay modeling glass painting etc the teacher knows the interest of his or her students the teacher asks the students to sit sit in different groups as per their interest accordingly the students group themselves one group gets engaged in drawing another in clay modeling and yet another in glass painting each group does the activity unanimously with their friends grouping students by their interest is found to be helpful the advantage of this method of grouping is that the students have the same interest and they can work together in that situation they can learn from each other thereby improving their skills and performance the disadvantage of this type of grouping is that students interested interest may be limited to one or two areas only hence lack of exposure may make their thoughts get crammed up so they may not get opportunities to try out new things that is one major delimitation of this grouping by students choice allowing students to choose their group partners is another type of grouping in this kind of grouping students are allowed to pick a partner or group of students with whom they desire to work the advantage of this type of grouping is that here the students can work more effectively in a collaborative way as they have chosen their own partners having been given the freedom of choice this kind of grouping is basically characterized by better understanding and even better team work as they know each other the disadvantage is that while allowing the students to choose their own group partners it may happen that a few of them are not included in any group and the freedom of choice in case of improper exercising makes students indulge in gossiping or any such activity which results in negligence towards work and they may talk to each other and not work on the desired activity the random student grouping or the heterogeneous grouping grouping students by random can help prevent students from labeling other students as slow or advanced random student groupings can be accomplished by having students count off pair up and or any other method of class division the advantage of this type of grouping is that both slow and advanced students interact with each other and learn students help one another and rectify their errors without embarrassment for free interaction with the students working in groups you need to effectively communicate with the students this will not only help in energizing groups to act purposefully but will serve to fulfill several other purposes like confidence building of learners to act creating better understanding among the members of group and members of other groups there are two possible ways for a teacher to communicate with the groups 
In the first situation, you as a teacher can directly communicate with students in a very small group without giving any scope for peer interaction. In the second situation, you can communicate with the group as a member of the group. In this situation, you share with the students equal partnership in the group where each one of you, including you, has the freedom to interact with other members. Thus, in the first type, the teacher controls the total communication process, whereas in the second type, she is dominantly group controlled. The disadvantage is that sometimes the brighter students might affect the progress of the slower ones. The more able students will tend to speed up, leaving the weaker ones far behind, so that each student is not included. Now, how to choose between the individual and the group learning methods? Suppose you observe that a small number of students in your class have a specific learning problem like pronouncing English words properly or solving problems on time and work. In such a situation, you need to take full control of the group and directly discuss with each student about their problem. But for other purposes, the second type of communication gives better results. Hence, while planning your lesson, instead of directly teaching the students together as a whole class, dividing them into smaller groups, encouraging participation in group work would be more effective. The most important thing in forming groups is to ensure that the students in a group are able to work together comfortably and have lots of interaction among themselves. Even the classroom arrangement can be done in a way that they sit in a circular form wherein they are in a group facing each other and can discuss while they are doing a task at hand. As a teacher, you need to explain to the students how to work in groups effectively. You also need to establish opportunities for students to work together in meaningful and productive ways. It is in this context that students can develop and polish their skills of collaboration. Let's look at the principles for management of group learning in classrooms. Limit the group size to 4 to 6 students. When there is no specific need, heterogeneous group is generally preferred as it encourages peer learning. Vary group composition so that no student feels labelled by being in a slow learner group and let all students have opportunity to work with every other student in the class. Choose a group leader and leaders also should keep on varying depending on the task. The task given to the groups is to be suitable to the student's mental ability. Give clear and simple instructions and set time limits which are usually flexible. Give each student in the group a specific responsibility that contributes to the success of the total group. Ensure participation of each and every student in the group. Provide a comfortable and free atmosphere to facilitate their discussions. Allow students in the group to help each other to solve problems because ultimately peer tutoring and that is the purpose. Give and respond to suggestions. Thank you. We talked about the group and the individual learning.